Hey everybody, it's Christine coming to you from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I'm live in my studio. I am done with another work day, yay! So who at home is also working from home and how long does it take you to get out of those pajamas? <laughs> I am very proud of myself. I did it first thing this morning. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're, <laughs> you're working it when you're not in your pajamas. So, um, so if you're out there watching me, why don't you comment below and let me know where you're watching me from. I would appreciate that. I'd love to see where everybody's coming from. So give me a second. I'm going to log into my Facebook page as well. Uh, I went live yesterday and I didn't know if I was live or not. And I think what I figured out is I need to check um, into my Facebook page after I go live because otherwise it's not refreshed. So um, with that being said, I'm pretty sure that you guys will be able to see me. And I had a lot of fun stamping with you yesterday, putting the monthly cards together for March. Today, I'm going to be putting a paper pumpkin together with you. So I'm gonna refresh this one more time. I'm hoping that um, I can see your comments come through so that I can answer any questions. And if for some reason I get into what I'm working on, I will probably not even look at the comments anyways. So, but um, exciting stuff. Today is Tuesday, March 24th, and the third release for Celebration Products was just announced this morning. Um, I can't remember everything off the top of my head, but there's whew, like maybe six more things there that are for with a $50 purchase and two things with a $100 purchase. I know the Butterfly Duet Punch is there and also some like Dino Roar paper and the Woven Heirlooms paper. It starts with art paper and the laser cut paper. So there's a bunch more things. So if you think that you have everything from Celebration for your purchases, you can guess again, there's more stuff. So if you have anything else on your wish list uh, to get, now's a great time because you can get more stuff for free with your purchase. So I'm gonna just look over here and see once if I can get my Facebook page up here um, so I can potentially follow along with you, but Ah, there it is. Yay, I'm so excited. That's exactly what jazz hands, right? That's how we say hi to everybody now is jazz hands or like the elbow pump thing. So, all right. So we just had an order today that we are safer at home until April 24th. So I'm not sure what that's going to mean for everybody, but um, I think that I'm going to have to reassess my classes for the month of January and we will be doing a lot more of this back and forth. So, but paper pumpkin, I'm gonna switch this down and I'm gonna show you what I got going on here. So the paper pumpkin is a monthly subscription that you can get um, once a month. You could have it um, be every month for as long as you want. You can cancel it at any time. Um, you don't have to oh, we'll go like that. So um, like you can get a prepaid subscription for like one month, three month, six or 12 month. So if you don't want to deal with it, you know, you want to get it every month um, that you can set up your account like that. I have a few people that come to my classes and they buy a prepaid subscription as their class like order. And basically they get their class for free because with a $20 order, their class is free and the paper pumpkin is $21 and they get this mailed to them. So how paper pumpkin works is if you are signed up by the 10th of the month, you will get that month's kit. So this was the special kit for March. Um, paper pumpkin celebrated their, I don't know if that cut because that label was there. They celebrated their seven year anniversary in March. So they've been going for seven years and I remember I got signed up for the very first paper pumpkin and I'll tell you, they've come a long way since the first kit I ever got. So, all right. So they just started wrapping it in this plastic wrap and that helps to protect it from the elements. I know with the snow that we've had recently, I was very happy that they switched that. It used to not be in plastic and sometimes the box would get wet. So. This March kit had a really pretty special box that coordinates with the the kit that's in the inside. And so I was, it's like Christmas trying to, like when it comes in your mailbox, opening up. So with this paper pumpkin, 
you get, we did, whoever was signed up for it in March, it always comes with one stamp set, but there was a bonus stamp set in here, and that was Stampin' Up, paper, you know, the Paper Pumpkin, the free gift for their birthday. So the very first Paper Pumpkin that you get when you sign up, you get this D block, and this is the actual uh, Paper Pumpkin block that I got with the previous kit, and um, there is a glue dot. <laughs> I just saw that, I'm like, what is that? It is a glue dot. I'll tell you, those things get everywhere. Okay, so that's the block that you get. And the, they designed the block, so this is the D block, they designed the stamps so that every stamp that you ever get in a paper pumpkin will at least fit on the D block. So this was the complimentary stamp set, and then this was the stamp set that was part of the kit. And then in every paper pumpkin, it comes with a little stampin' spot, which is a current stampin' of color. And from what I understand and have been told is they never duplicate a color within a 12 month period. So this is basic gray. And I knew that ahead of time what color was coordinating with this. So I pulled down a basic gray ink pad because I like to save these little spots for free gifts for my customers or to give away. And then I like to use my bigger ink pad for when I'm working on the paper pumpkin. So, but everyone comes with one of those. Then there's a sheet in here. Yay! It talks about add some spring and add some spring to your crafts with the free stamp set. So it talks about that. And normally what they do is they advertise for the next month. You open up the tissue paper, which you can save because this box would make a great box to wrap up a gift for somebody because look at that. You got your tissue paper and you've got this pretty box. So all right, I'm gonna set that off to the side. And we have our kit. So this is great. So um, you're home now with the kids, potentially, or maybe you don't have kids in your home, but you're looking for something fun and crafty to do. Uh, this subscription is awesome because it really helps you make something very creative and crafty, but you don't have to have a lot of supplies. So in this one, you're gonna make four, four, and four. So 12 total cards, three different designs, and it comes with the envelopes. It comes with everything that you need. And my, I was gonna wing it this time. You know what, the last time I put a paper pumpkin together was probably what, like a year ago? And that was probably my first one in three years. So, oh. so maybe I should make it a goal that on a monthly basis, we put a paper pumpkin together. How does that sound? Do you like that idea? Hi, Jay, I see that you, you're watching, yay, okay. Jay, by the way, thank you so much. I got your card in the mail. Wait, I'm going to show everybody what you made for me. Jay um, is a fellow uh, demonstrator on Kelly Atchison's team. And I will tell you, Jay, this is my favorite card in the catalog, in the mini catalog. I loved this stamp set. And somebody, oh, um, I'm trying to remember her name from the Occasion Jamboree, she made this. But Jay had a craft show and she made these. And in the inside was a packet of Black Eyed Susan. So Jay, thank you so much for this. I got it yesterday and I meant to send you a quick little thank you note. So, but I love it. I love it. So isn't that awesome? Spreading joy and love, okay? That's what we like to do. We're stampers. We love to share the love. So, all right. So in the paper pumpkin, we have four like this. There are four like this one. And then there are four like that. So these are our card bases. Now, you're looking at these and you may not be able to tell it from the Facebook Live, from the video, but this isn't a normal size card. So I have, this is from my class that I have tomorrow night for the timeless, oh, what is it, Tropical Oasis class. So you can see the size difference. This is an A2 on my left, and then this is a note card size. So this is three and a half by five, where this is a five and a half by four and a quarter. So you have your card bases like this, and we got our three sets of card bases. You get die cuts with this. So paper pumpkin is a very appealing to people who are just getting started, people who love a challenge in their crafting as well, because if you don't like the size of this card, I've been seeing different ideas on, there's different pin, um, like Facebook groups for paper pumpkin, like you could take this card and cut it off right here and then mount this onto 
a different size, like here I have a white card here. You could like put that onto a different card base. So what's awesome about Paper Pumpkin is you never know what you're gonna get, but um, if you give it a chance and you like to be inspired to find different ideas, you can take the products from within here and completely change them around. Okay, so we've got our envelopes here as well. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love when and I know I got that shadow thing going on there, so I'll go down here, but they they put color on the inside of the flaps. So we've got some pink, petal pink ones. I believe this is so saffron, and then I'm guessing uh, shaded spruce would be my guess. So, so these are our different uh, envelopes, and then we have some die cut punch out things. So like when I get these, there's like one, two, there's four sheets, I'm assuming one for each of the cards. So when I get them, I like to hold them all together and kind of pop them all at once. There's these awesome rain boots with daffodils. So I absolutely love daffodils. They are one of my favorite spring flowers. My screensaver on my phone. Oh, let's see if it works. Yeah, there it is. It's a daffodil. <laughs> That's actually from my flower bed from maybe nine years ago. So we got some more boots here. Look at the cute little bunny. What's awesome is the stamps that they sent as the free gift, they kind of coordinate with the different die cut images here. So there's also some flowers here. So I like to put them there. Now these little hearts are going to be a little bit tedious, but I kind of just get a good hold on them and then pop them out all at the same time. You can go for it one at a time, but usually when I'm doing something like this, I like to be efficient with my time. <laughs> Some people will say I rush, but hey, whatever floats your boat. So got all my little hearts out. Okay, I'm just throw that on the floor. Nobody's here to clean up except for myself and nobody's here making a mess on my floor except for me. So um, then this is a sheet of, they're actually like die cuts as well. And it's super cool, they gave you five of each one in case you make a mistake. So I know that I'm not always the most perfect stamper. It takes me a couple tries to get it good. They also sent you in here the mini glue dots. Look at these. These are little acetate, what are they? They're epoxy shapes. And there's little raindrops and there's little circles. So those will be for embellishments on the cards. They also sent some baker's twine. That is, I'm guessing, pear pizzazz and white. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. I didn't look at the actual colors. So that can go on the floor. Okay, then what you get, um, it's, where did it, it was on the back side of the cardboard is the instructions. So you think it's just pictures, but actually what you need to do is you need to flip it open and um, look at the instructions. And I would recommend, you know what they always said in school when you had to follow instructions is read them all from beginning to end and then proceed, like when you're baking a cake. So it talks about stamping the sentiments on the labels, stamp the textures on the card bases, uh, then wrap twine around the umbrella card twice, then tie a bow. Uh, three is wrap more twine, 11, two 11 inch pieces of twine around the yellow rain boots and tie a bow. Then we've got adhere all the die cuts to um, the card bases using dimensionals. And then on, on the bunny card, tie a bow and add the adhere, ad, adhere the enamel dots. Okay, so let's, let's figure this out. First thing it says stamp the sentiments on the label. So I read through the directions. I feel like, okay, let's wing it and let's go. So it says stamp the sentiments on the label. So Here's my deal for you gals. Whoever is watching this video, there are 12 cards in here and I would love to brighten somebody's day. So I am making these cards with the thought of sending them to somebody that you know that needs some love. So everybody that's on here, you see my name is Christine Bertram. You, what you wanna do is send me a private Facebook message. Don't put it in the comment section of this video, you wanna send it to me privately. If you have my phone number, go ahead and do that too. But what I'd love for you to do is send me the name and address of a person you want to receive one of these cards. And I will pop it in the mail in the next day or two and spread some love to somebody that needs some uplifting words of encouragement. 
<laughs> or a, like a little pick-me-up. Like this one says, you are capable of amazing things. This one says, no matter the weather, we're in this together and let love grow. That's how I'm going to make these cards. So why don't you um, message me and tell me who you would love to receive these cards? Because I love stamping with the thought of somebody I know or indirectly know is going to be receiving these cards. So this first one right here, I'm going to set this here so that we can kind of watch along. And I know that that shadow is up there, but we go with it. So this first one says, let love grow. So what happens when you get a paper pumpkin is you have your one block. But if you can see off to the side here, I've got different blocks. I'm a stamper. So I got a little collection of these acrylic blocks going on. It's always a good idea to have the right size stamp, right size block for the stamp. So this one says, let love grow. And to me on that big block, it's big. Like you don't need a block that big. So what I, if you have, this is the only block you have, that's what you have to use. And it's perfectly fine because what you would do is you would open up your spot here and you would just ink it up like that, which is perfectly fine. But because I'm going to be using my ink pad like that, I don't want to use a, a block that big. I'm actually thinking this one's better. So the blocks all have their size on the side. So that says C and let love grow here. And now the other thing is I have this hard tile right here. And I don't like to stamp with photopolymer stamps on this hard surface like this. I like to put like a foam mat. And all this is is the Stampin' Up! Pierce mat. And I've got paper around it. So I've got my stamp here that says Let Love Grow. And to, I don't know if you guys, I went really fast with opening and shutting this. But this new style ink pad is like a compact case. So you kind of just pop this up like this. And it slides like that. So that's how that works. So let love grow. So because of the foam pads, you don't need to squish very hard. I'm really just lightly tapping on here and I'm just getting ink on it. What's awesome about the photopolymer is you can see that gray through there. And I'm going to stamp this one first. I'm going to ink up again because I always, everybody asks me, why do your images always look like they're perfect? So I make sure there's a lot of good ink on there. And when I'm stamping, I like to get even pressure and allow the ink time to soak into the paper. And I can see here it's a little bit darker here, a little bit lighter, you can still read it. Um, so knowing that, that's how that worked, I'm just going to make sure I get a little bit more ink on that side and I might press just a little bit harder right there. So. With the clear blocks and the photopolymer stamps, you can completely see through where you're stamping. Oh my goodness, look at that. Photopolymer stamps also have this tendency of sticking. So that looks much better for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the other two here. So you see what I do is I kind of hover over the top and then when I think I've got it in a good spot, I just kind of shut my eyes and stamp. <laughs> so kind of, um, let's see here. So I kind of like hover up and down, left, right, get a little more ink and then go for it. All right. Kelly says that she needs to put hers together. Yes, I was just talking with Kelly. Kelly's my cousin. She's watching right now, or she, <laughs> she looks like she is. Um, she says she's got a boatload of paper pumpkins to put together. Hopefully, she can find some time now to get working on them with her aunt, or her mom, my aunt Karen. Okay, let love grow. What you do when you're done with it is you stamp off a couple times. And then after you've stamped off, this is the chamois, and it is wet just from water. And all I do is slide my stamps back and forth to get them clean. And then when you're done, you just take that right off and you put that back on the block. Okay, the next one is the sentiment that says, no matter the weather, we're in this together. And then here's a little bit smaller of a block. So I'm gonna use this one as the B block. And that one is on the circle you can see right there. So no matter the weather, we're in this together. I always, encourage practicing on a white piece of paper too. <laughs> I should 
practice what I preach. So here we go. One, two, take your time when you're stamping. So many people I see are just want to get it done. You own this stamp. When you're holding it, you're in charge. Just get it exactly where you want it. Press down, straight and even, good pressure. Did you see that? All four of those I'm completely happy with. Once you got them stamped, you can go ahead and punch them out. Now, you saw me die, um, punch out all those little pieces over there, but you didn't see me do these right away. I find that it's easier to stamp the sentiments on the sheet as a whole um, versus doing them all individually. So like, let's pretend this was my circle. White on white is hard to see where that is, where having it on that piece with the circle outline, it was a lot easier. So, okay. So that one is done. And the last sentiment is something along the lines of, you're amazing. You all are amazing. Just know that. I love each and every one of you. Okay. So... We're gonna pull that out here, and I believe it's this one right here. And this block looks like it's a good size for this one as well. It says you are a, mm, I have a hard time reading that. <laughs> you are capable of amazing things. So that's gonna be on the blue ones here. So if you uh, have these extra two banners here that you don't need to use, go ahead and save them for a different project. So. I'm going to get that inked out. Now let's look at this real quick. Trickery here. Do you see here that there's a banner end and the banner end is on the left end and I just almost did them all facing the opposite way. And I didn't say the wrong way because there is no wrong way. When you're stamping, there are no mistakes. There's just happy accidents. So you are capable of amazing things. So if you would have stamped this with the banner on the right end, like we generally do in class, no big deal. You would have just flipped it around and it still would have looked beautiful. So there's another one. And last but not least is number four. So again, if you wouldn't have liked the way that one stamped, you could have definitely just used that last little banner. So we've got those done. All right, stamp off. And for now, I'm going to shut up my ink pad and move my extra banners. Now again, these are perfectly good. Do not throw these away. Use them for something else. Okay, so I like to clean up as I go. So let's go ahead and clean that guy. All right, next step. It says, oh, we have to stamp some textures on the card bases. Ooh, okay, so let's see what that is. So I am thinking that there are some clouds on here. So this one right here, one, two, three, four. I'm guessing if you look at this, you can see it's a little bit darker in some spots and that kind of fits the sky right here. So we're gonna grab him. Um, for those of you that know me and have stamped with me and they've already given me a hard time about it, a lot of things that I use for stamping are hymns. So <laughs> my blocks are him, my stamps are hymns. So my cloud is a him. That's just how I roll. So we are going to grab the cloud and ink it up. Let's see what it looks like on our white paper here. Ooh, looks like a dark storm cloud to me. All right, so I think that based off of my picture here and it has like one here, 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 here. So I'm just gonna go random with it. Like, so one here. Ooh, super cool. So look at, I'll do one. Ooh, do you see what I almost did? I have the card open. So had I stamped that, it would have been on the back of that. So let's go ahead and burnish our edges of these four. Well, before I want to stamp and Get that shut. Bone folder. Everybody needs one. If you're a card maker, get one. We sell them. I sell them through Stampin' Up. They help to give you a crisp, even edge on your card here, your card base. All right, let's get back to this guy. See, guys. All right, this one, I was going to put one right about here. And I'm going to put one off the edge over here. 
and I'm gonna put one here. Oh my gosh. So it just adds a whole bunch of texture to it. So, all right, there's one. My goal before we are done with this live is to have all of these cards made so that when you start texting me, emailing me, messaging me, however you wanna tell me, once I get names of 12 people, as soon as I get the first one, I'll send it out, but my goal is that as I get the names of people to send these to, I have them ready to go, and if you want me to personalize the message on the inside, I would be more than happy to do that. All right, last but not least, we're gonna do here. Would you one over here? It's so cool, it just makes it look more 3D having this extra cloud here. Okay, so let's see what else needs to get stamped. That was that, and oh, I believe that that card has some raindrops on it. So let's get this one cleaned up and get that out of the way. Let's see here. We are, yes, we have some raindrops here. So let's pull that one out. We'll get rid of this one. Get our little guy. So now this one is an A block. It is a teeny tiny widow one. So we're gonna put our stamps right in the middle, our stamp right in the middle. And looking at this instruction sheet, it looks like I've got these little raindrops all over. Raindrops keep falling on my head. So I'm gonna move this one out of the way <clears throat> and we're gonna pull in this one. This is the one with the lady with her old olive rain boots. So when you're out and about and you see a color, <laughs> do you associate it with a Stampin' Up! color like right now? If you flip on me, look, I'm wearing Night of Navy. So um, I, <laughs> I associate all my colors <laughs> with, hey, that's a Stampin' Up! color. So she's got her old olive boots on and her dapper denim. You guys remember dapper denim? She's got her dapper denim jeans on, her pretty umbrella. Okay, those are folded. Now let's get back to here. So now... I try to tell everybody this in my class. If you don't like the way something looks or the way I make it and you want to do it slightly different or crazy different, I'm cool with that. So I'm looking at this and I think, okay, there's a lot of raindrops. So you don't have to do as many raindrops as they have, but whatever you want, just make sure that when you're stamping your raindrops, that the raindrops are falling the right way. There are tears and the bigger bottom end should be on the bottom. So let's see what we got going on here. I, uh, I'm having a hard time thinking about how do I stamp this, but we're just going to go for it. So I like to do something called two-step stamping or like first strength, second strength. So you can see here first, second, but then you don't want it to look like, like you don't want a pattern. My friend Gina would tell me, you make that look too all alike. You got to have randomness. So I'm trying to make it look like the dark ones are not, um, in a, like I started to go on a roll <laughs> and it's like, nope, gotta bring it down. So just be careful when you're doing that, that everything doesn't look the same. Now, like I'm thinking I want some right here. So I'm gonna stamp off and then I'm gonna put some at second strength there. And they are kind of hard to see, um, but just kind of fill this in. And the thing you have to be careful with is when you, stamp at full strength, like I just went here, you stamp full strength off to the side, you can't go right back onto your project and stamp because it's, the one that was half off is gonna make it kind of weird, like it's off, the, the shading is off. So you just have to be careful with that. So, okay, so there's one. It is like, <laughs> if, if it's you making this and you want some of your rain to be going sideways, you definitely can do that, but um, I like my rain to be falling up and down, so that's what I'm gonna do. And this one, I'm gonna do just a little bit less. And we're gonna put one there and there. So these are really teeny tiny raindrops. There is a stamp set when we did the monthly cards yesterday, the monthly cards, the under my umbrella had some raindrops in there and they are just a little bit bigger. Okay, so there's that one. I got this one. I almost am like tempted to leave one of them even blank and not have 
have any raindrops. So maybe we'll do that because, you know, it's not raining all the time. So let's see here. And maybe it just finished. So we got some right there. We're going to move over here. Now you saw what I did as I went from there over to the side. I try not to go from the left to the right because of that thing that I just talked about with them being shaded weird. Okay. All right. So now we have one left. And I think, I think, I think I'm going to leave it. So, yep, that's what we're going to do. All right. So that stamp is done. So let's get that one cleaned up. And sh there's something else on the bottom of this one I noticed. There's some, oh, I don't know, they look like concrete lines or something. So I noticed that that one is right here. So we're gonna pull that one off and put on the block. And as long as we're stamping here, I'm gonna look at this, see how they did it. They have the longer side out towards the bottom and there's just like three or four of them random. So we're gonna go like this. And then I'll do one at second strength off to the side. And I'll do one here and one like that. Okay, so let's see how that looks. I think that'll be fine. So we're gonna do one more over here like that. Do it second strength there. First, second. Okay, so we got two done. Pull in another one and there. And we'll put one here and there. And last but not least, we'll do one like that. You see how I'm just not always being consistent about it? It's okay. No two cards are ever gonna be the same and nobody will ever know that you meant for one to be stamped more or less or however they end up being. So, all right, let's just take a quick peek at this and see if there's anything else. I think not. All right, over here, I'm seeing some stuff. I don't, oh, it's that. Okay, so this is what we're gonna need for this next one. I was having like, what is that? So let's pull that weird thing out. Cool backgrounds. Okay, so clouds, there's a flower, there's hearts, there's this like road looking type thing, and then there's speckles here. Awesome. So I'm gonna put that on the C block here because that's the, about the right size for going diagonally. Now, we didn't do the scoring on this one. So let's flip this over and we'll score this. And then the one thing I try to make sure is that my corners get lined up on here so that your card ends up being straight. All right, we'll grab the last two. So as I'm putting this down, I'm trying to line up the two corners. And then last but not least, all right, done with the bone folder for now. Okay, we got our four bases here. All right, so this one, it looks like that it's just along the bottom. So we're gonna grab this stamp. Let's see what it looks like. All right, I like it. I think that would make some great texture. And I think what it is is just along the bottom here on the gray. So there's one. We'll do another one and this. So how many of you actually went out and you see me doing a paper pumpkin, you go grab your paper pumpkin, you wanna make it with me? <laughs> I would love to know that. <laughs> how many of you have paper pumpkins that are stacking up and just sitting there and you need some time to put them together? Well, now is the time to do it. Hopefully you can find a little time in all this chaos to sit down and put some of your pumpkins together so that you can spread some love. All right, boom. All right. Oh, I love this. I just looked over at this and I see these clouds on here and they look so cool. All right. So lastly, I am going to clean this up. And that's all I do is don't be afraid to get your fingers in there and touch the purple chamois. That's all it is, is a chamois. All right, so let's put this back. So with the paper pumpkin, you'll start to get yourself, if you sign up, you start to get yourself a little collection of stamps, a little collection of inks, and then you sometimes will have some leftover products. All right, let's see what's next on our list here. 
All right. Um, wrap 32 inches of twine around the umbrella card twice, then tie a bow. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. I um, have some tear and tape. Oh, remember last time I had to grab that? It's right here. So normally you will get everything that you need in the paper pumpkin. So in this case, they gave you these glue dots. And glue dots are great, but I like tear and tape. And so... When I'm using twine and ribbon and stuff, I like to use the tear and tape. So what I will do is, because these boots are gonna go right here. Oh my gosh, they set that up so that the boots go right with her boots. Is that how they did that? Look at that, I didn't even guess that. I thought they were just down here, but okay. Well, that's neat. They really think about everything. So what I'm gonna do is, I see that the twine is about like in the middle of her boots. So I'm gonna put this tear and tape. My thumb is still not re. <laughs> Hopefully by the, by the time that we're done with our whole safer from home thing, that my thumbnail's grown out and you'll see how fast my nails grow because <laughs> I'll probably stop talking about that. So, okay, take your baker's twine and what you're gonna do is find the spot where you have your tear and tape and it says to wrap it around twice. So what I've done is, I don't wanna see my seam of my tear and tape on the back. So what I've done is I've made it so that my, it's not even a seam, let's see here. There's my glue scissors. This is my ribbon scissors. Okay, so I've got it so that my tails are gonna be underneath the front. Now it said to make a bow. Well, I'll tell you, I do not make any bows while they have like the string is attached to the card. That would make me very angry and frustrated. So I try to avoid that kind of um, feeling in my life. So I'm gonna show you a different way of how I would do that. So I'm first taking the string and I'm gonna do all of these first by wrapping them around. So I'm gonna go like one, two, buckle my shoe Ooh, and I crossed it in the back so just pay attention to that if you don't want it crossed in the back then make sure you don't cross it in the back but once you get it exactly where you want it then you're going to cut that so and just for security purposes so your ribbon doesn't come undone you could just stick a piece right over the top of it I'm going to go back on this one let's see if I crossed oh no I didn't yay so we're going to just put that right over the top that'll seal that now, what we're gonna do is take that. Do you see how that pokey tool works? You just kind of make sure that it's pressed down good and you catch it and that waxy paper comes right up allowing you to grab it. Okay, so we've got another one here and I don't wanna cross in the back, so I'm just gonna do that and cut my ribbon and I will do the last one here. So my goal was to get these 12 cards made in an hour to show you that Paper Pumpkin is not time consuming. <laughs> so for those of you that have let them build up, you really don't need a lot of time to put them together. I think it's mind over matter. Um, for us, it's half the battle is just actually taking the hour or hour and a half to sit down and actually make them. So, all right, we've got our four cards here ready to go. So the next thing that it said to do is make a bow. Well, I'm not gonna make a bow quite yet. I'm gonna save the bow for the end. I like bows at the end. In this case, what I would suggest we do next is we're gonna take our boots. These boots are made for walking and that's what they'll do. So I'm gonna flip all of my boots over. I think there's one right here, yep, okay. So these are the big dimensionals. I am not, ooh, yeah, I'm not gonna take the time. Mm, okay, so <laughs> for those of you who know me, I like to conserve things. So this is my glue scissors. So I had a hard time using a whole dimensional. Did you see what went through my head there? <laughs> laugh at, no, laugh with me, not at me. So. <clears throat> by cutting them in half, this is what I really wanted to do. I wanted to use half of it on the top and half of it on the bottom, okay? 
So that helps with saving dimensionals. So then you have this edge that is just one long strip of dimensionals. Really, all you have to do is cut them into smaller pieces and you've just gotten yourself some extra dimensionals. I have a tendency to think that people actually throw that away. I've tried to teach all my customers to save that so that you use it. It's perfectly good dimensionals. So, all right, so there we got two prepped. And now I can just go and put these all on this one and one left then. I wish I had an assistant here that was picking off my backs for me because I know that you're gonna watch me struggle doing that in a second here. So, okay, that is gonna go over there. Now I've got the ends here that I can use that are already cut. All right, so, oh yeah. <laughs> so, there we go. The more that you stick these down, the easier they are to pop up. So, she's got in the sample here, her boots are right, her green boots are right on top of her. So I'm going to line them up to make it look like they're right there. And we're gonna pick these off then while we're at it. And I'm gonna have a dimensional flying mess. Whenever I see dimensionals all over the place, <laughs> no offense, but I think of Bonnie and Cheryl, <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. These little pieces actually are popping out. I didn't even know that. So let's go back here. So we like to see dimensionals flying. That means that we've been working hard. And now what's gonna happen is this little bit of dimensional was sticking out. Let's see how this one did. And this one just pops out and look at that. Who would have thought that? Oh, super cool. You see the ribbon behind there, but that's quite all right. Let's see how this one did. Okay, so Nancy, I hope that you watch this replay later. She's holed up down at a hotel. She's self-quarantining without any stamping supplies. How sad is that? I offered three times to send stuff down there and she kept saying no. So I wanted to send her a paper pumpkin. That would give her something to do, but I hope that she's able to get home soon. All right, so I noticed that this guy needs to get moved. All right, so, oh, I got one more right there. You gotta be careful. When you start taking dimensionals off of things, they start sticking to everything. So you get to like a little hot mess going on. All right, boots on. Boots on. And last but not least, where's our last one, right? Over here, boots on. Oh, we gotta pick these out. All right, how's everybody doing? <laughs> Still following along okay? I know this one's gonna be a little bit longer than yesterday, so. We're gonna put this guy right back on there. All right, boots on, perfect. Okay, let's get my little hot mess of stuff out of the way here. All right, perfect. Now, we were talking about bows earlier. So what's left on this card, if you see here, there's the sentiment with the blue right here, and there's also a bow. So. When I do ribbony things, or I shouldn't say ribbony, bannery things, I like to have my banner. In this case, I will use the whole dimensional, and I put it right on that one side. And then I'll take my liquid glue and put a little bit of glue on the one side. And this is going to get positioned right to the edge here. And then what's happened is... I have the pop-up just on this side. So it gives the it, like the banner a little bit of dimension here. Okay, so to prep these, I'm going to flip all three of them over. And yep, my forehead feels fine. I'm using a whole dimensional. It's okay to do that. <laughs> In this case, it made sense to use a whole dimensional. <laughs> all right, then as long as I'm at it, I'm just gonna put glue on all three of them at the same time. This goes down and then we can grab the next one. Now this is called being efficient. All right, there's another one done. And last but not least for this card is this. All right, so talked about bows earlier. So you could have struggled and tied the bow right on there while it's attached to the card. And to me, that's like, uh-uh, no thanks, I can't handle that. 
So when you use a bow maker, it allows you to like make your own bow. And I like to make double bows a lot. And I'll tell you how I did this on the next one. But when you can make your own bow, it kind of gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So now that I've got my bow, I'll take my glue dot. We're gonna see that comes off. And I put the glue dot right where I'm gonna want the bow. And that waxy paper comes off and I attach the bow <laughs> like that. So it makes it like, I did the double bow because you have a double wrap around here. And so it kind of makes it look like it's all one thing. Oh, and you know me, I'm trying to get this to get it so it's, um, it isn't squirrely. Okay, there, watch this. That's gonna do it. Okay, perfect. So it's like you got a little double bow on the side. Now, isn't that adorable? Let's go like right there. I know that shadow is kind of crazy, but there we go. We got one done. So bow makers, my stamping friend, Kathy Miller, her customer's husband, I believe is the connection, makes the bow makers and they're only $5 custom made and I'm going to start over so that you can see it. So if you want one, reach out to me, but I take my, I'm left hand, I'm a right handy. So I take the loose end of my right hand and I wrap it around two times to make a double bow. If you wanted three, you could do it three, but if you want one, you just do one, but I like the double bow. So you've got two loops around here. You got the loose end on your, my right, and it goes underneath and then it goes over and under and then all I do is tie this into um, it's not even a knot it's just one time and I just tighten it really good and as I tighten it I pull my tails down so there's a bow and we're gonna do it again so loose end on the right around two times under over under and then um, I don't want to say knot it, but kind of like knot it. All right. And as you pull the ends, you just tighten them. All right. We're going to do one more. By the time you see this the fourth time, you should have it. You'll be doing bows in your sleep. So when people come to my classes in person, one of the special treats that I do for everybody is if there are bows, I make all your bows for you. I don't like to see people struggling with bows. So I set that off to the side. And we're going to pull in the three cards here and we're done with that for right now. So these glue dots, you're going to put one there and one there. And lastly, this guy, what I'm doing is I'm putting them right over the string. And as you press down, you should be able to pick that waxy paper off. No problem. And then we're going to set our bowl right into that glue dot. So it's also called AKA a snot dot. So it looks like a clear little healthy booger because it's clear. And um, it's just a really, really tacky, sticky glue dot. So that is what I use to attach my bows to cards. So there we go, boom. We got four cards done. Okay, we're going on 48 minutes and my goal was to get these done in an hour. So let's see what we got next. All right. This one, this one looks like you've got these boots with, ah, I don't like it, but there's, it's wrapped around there. So personally, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna take and not wrap our string around the boots. So we're gonna get our boots though, because we're gonna use them. And it looks like we use the flowers that are right here. And this is where we also need our, let's see, where was that here? So um, we got our boots and we need our circles. So let's, see what we got. We got our boots and it looks like the boots are popped up. So in this case, I'm going to use two whole ones and I'm going to also use a half. So let's, yep, everything's okay. In this case, I love the fact that the dimensionals are a little bit thicker and they take up that space. So then I'm going to use one of these little halfers towards the bottom and I'll put this one here and this one here. And then we're gonna pick off our 
paper backings. All right, let's see here. Then the way that the sample looked, it looked like this was like kind of nestled in the grass. Our circle is kind of like tucked in there and I'm gonna do that flat. I like the way that looks. Got just a couple more here that need to get picked off. Wow, I am like loving this paper pumpkin. So, you know, honestly, I design lots of cards and make lots of cards to have for class. And it's really hard to just make simple um, cards that are just not a lot of, like not a lot going into them. And it makes it can be like overwhelming, like trying to make and make and make. And this is just fun. It's a kit. It feels like a sense of accomplishment putting this kit together. I'm so excited, 12 cards in like such a short amount of time. So, okay, look at this. I'm doing all four of these. Now, if you're at home, and you don't wanna make all 12 of them at the same time. You can just make one at a time. That's perfectly fine. So look at this. I'm gonna nestle that right in there. So that one's good. Then we're gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna put this one right in there as well. And our third one, same thing. Chuck that guy. See, it's a guy. All right, and then lastly, we'll do this one. And boom. All right, next then are these flowers on the top. So these flowers on the top, they looked to me like they were popped up as well. And like this one is kind of nestled over and that one's nestled behind. So I'm just gonna flip, flip, flip them all over and we're gonna put three. Let's see here, where's our pinky down there? So I'm gonna move that a little bit further away because that's the part that kind of nestles over the top. And I don't wanna add like more dimension to that section of flower. So we're gonna go back here, there. Wow, look at all these dimensionals I'm using. You girls should be proud of me using whole dimensionals. Oh man, let's put that back on there. Okay, put that there. And let's see how good I am at getting this stuff off. I find that I'm using my index finger to, to get them off versus my thumb. Giving my thumb a break. It's gonna go soft on me. All right, so got them all off. So how the sample looked here is that that flower was kind of popping over the top and the others were kind of poking behind. So we're gonna go something like that, okay? So I got that kind of curving around that sentiment. All right, so let's do this one. So like that's kind of behind, that's kind of over, boom. And then here's this one, same thing. Oh yeah, liking it. Very pretty. Here's another one. Okay, four. Now you're wondering, okay, well, what about the thread? So I didn't want to wrap it around. I didn't like the way it looked around it, but I do like the concept of having a bow on here. So I'm going to go bow happy. I'm going to say bow crazy. So here's one. And what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just use my little glue dot and put that right on the side where they have it on theirs. Kind of like tuck it on the bottom here. So let's see here. Or is it gonna look weird that there's a bow over there? Hmm, you know what? I think instead of putting it, let's see what it looks like right here right in the middle of the flowers. I like that better. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do with mine. Now, if you have your own kit at home, you're welcome to wrap it around, but I like having that bow right in the middle. So boom, see, it's all about being creative and it's not that much creativity change, but <laughs> it makes me feel like I made that card my own by changing it. <laughs> so, okay, we're gonna make one more bow here for our second one, and oop, my scissors didn't want to cut that. So, all right, here's another one. 
And then we have one more style of card to do. And it has lots of Bob Bunny on it. So save that one for last. Okay. So when I cut my tails, I like to cut them at the same time. And one more. Okay. See how fast you can make bows when you have a bow maker. Um, I know I have some customers who like to make them without a bow maker and more power to you, but they would not turn out good if I had to do them like that. So we're set that off to the side and grab out the three cards that we have left to put these on. And I'm going to put that glue dot right in the middle like so and fills in that crack all right so boom got that one done now let's see this little guy is gonna go right there as well and that okay yay we've got eight cards done okay super cool so for those of you that are loving this, this kit, Stampin' Up! actually has refills available. If you got the original one, cool. And if you didn't and you just want that kit that has all these like consumable stuff, it wouldn't have the stamps, the inks, or um, the, uh, the stamps, inks, or the block. It would just have like what came in the kit of paper. Like that, you could get that. And it's only $10, and it's to make the 12 cards. So, okay, lastly, this one right here. So, we need the boots, the bunny, and the label. Looks like the label is popped up. <laughs> it's so funny. As I was here, my phone was going off, and my dear was calling me. <laughs> so, But I'm not in class, um, so I let it go. Sorry, dear. He's trying again. Oops. Well, we're going to finish this up and then I'll take the call. So um, we are almost done. <laughs> Those of you who love to come to my classes, we always like to say hi to him <laughs> when we're in the middle of class. But all right, I'm prepping these. So these are the labels. So get them all set. You see, I used three whole ones. Oh my goodness. All right, so that's ready to go. And doing that and then we got our boots are over here the boots look like let's see here they look like they're popped up so we will pop them up and do a couple there we'll do one there 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 i think i'm gonna oh i'm just gonna put a full one there okay here here there there I am dimensional happy right now. All right, so we're gonna do here. You can see here the middle didn't get popped out on that one or that one. And we're gonna use this half one over here. And there, 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 there. Boom, okay, last one over here. Use up these dimensionals. You got them in your paper pumpkin kit, you might as well use them up, okay. If there's any left over though, use them for the next cards that you're working on. All right, so get that one prepped. And just a reminder, don't forget to let me know who you want me to send these cards to. I would love to brighten somebody's day. That's what it's all about. Stampers are the greatest people and they love to spread joy and love. And that's what I love to do. I also love to bring people together. So. Hopefully, through some Facebook Lives now, we can bring some people back together because we are all missing seeing each other's faces. I know this. So, all right. So, we got that prepped. It looks like, oh my goodness, get you back on here. All right. So, looking at this last one here, the boots are standing kind of like so. And I'm thinking, I'm going to move mine over just a hair here so that I got room for my bonnie. And I'm only gonna do one dimensional, more on his head. And I'm gonna actually do a little bit of liquid glue on his butt so that um, he's gonna be kind of just like that. So if I would've put another dimensional close over here, it might've popped that out even more. So that's why I only put a little bit of liquid glue on his butt. All right, so we're gonna do that one. And this one. 
And lastly, this one. Okay, like so. We have this strip down here is Let to Love Grow. So I'm gonna move that over here so I got room for my bow. Let to Love Grow. Let Love Grow. And one more. Last but not least, put one here. All right, let's get some bunnies done. So our flipper still skin them over and we're gonna put it more by its head and we're gonna put glue by its boomby and little there, little there, little there. Okay, you say you've got glue butt. Okay, so we're gonna put that one like so. This one over here and this one. All right, we are making progress. Okay, hearts. Oh my gosh, like there's a lot of heart action going on here. Lots of love. Um, I'm not feeling the little, it's like right here. There's like a heart above the bunny's head. Yeah, um, I don't think I'm gonna do that, but <laughs> um, I am definitely gonna put the bow on it though. Um, so what they said to do was make a bow and tuck it underneath it, and that's fine. If you want, you can do that, but I think for all intents and purposes, I'm going to keep going with the way that I've been doing it, and I'll show you what I'm thinking. We're just going to put a bow right along the edge here, like so, and the little bow is going to be off to the side like that. So that's what I'm thinking. And you know what? I think that my tails are going to be a little long, so I'm going to trim them up so they don't get caught in the card. So look at that. Okay. So entertain me and follow me along. I'm going to, because my goal is really to get these done. So I could say let's finish the bows later on, but I want to show you that these cards could be made in an hour. And so we're going to do one more. Now, I don't have any extra paper pumpkins, like full kits available. I generally do buy extra, like so this month I did get six of them and I had four people reach out to me and claim my four of them and I kept the other two. I usually keep two for myself um, for using for cards, for thank yous or birthdays. I Or I like to collect them like everybody else. I do have a paper pumpkin pile, so... Um, I don't have any unopened boxes of this one, but um, in the future, I usually do get like two to three extra. Um, this time, I knew that with it being the special stamp set and their anniversary, I did get extra ones. And I'm happy I did because the three people that want them forgot to sign up. And so I love helping people get the things that they want. Um, if they forget to or if they run out, then I have them for you. So... There's that one. Let's pick that paper off of that one. And this little guy right here, he's left. And we're gonna put this right there. Okay. Oh my gosh, get off there. Okay, so this one's gonna go right there. All right, yay, yay, yay. Okay, so what's left? These little things. Um, They're little raindrops and little circles. And honestly, I will put them in random spots on all of the cards. Um, these I find are really hard to pick up with your nails. So if you have a pokey tool, it's great to use it in this case. Like get your pointer tool right underneath it so that it's sticking. And like right there, you wanna make sure that you're doing your raindrops so that like the, the I don't know, you can't even see that probably, but um, you got the the, Big end is at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead, that I'm cool with. I'm gonna put that together or put them on later. So this was the March paper pumpkin and we made 12 cards together. We started a little less than an hour ago. And hi dear. <laughs> so um, we, we started a little less than an hour ago and we made them all. So perfect. I, um, 
wanted to share that with you. I have a couple notes here I also want to go through. So um, just a reminder again, send me the names and addresses of the people you want me to send the cards, these cards to. Um, a three-month paper pumpkin, I think is like $55. So you get, you could prepay it. And right now during celebration, you get a free item. You could pick anything. Um, just go to my website, cardsbycrispy.com. Oh, here, let me flip back. So you can get um, a three-month paper pumpkin subscription uh, for, like, I think it's about $55. And that doesn't include shipping or tax. Uh, I think it, I don't know. You get shipping and tax on there. But then what happens is you put it onto your account and then it's sent to you. And then you can just go ahead and cancel it whenever you want. Um, you could use that purchase towards getting your cards for free at one of my upcoming classes, which I will flip back down here so you can see tomorrow night. I will be going live at 6 p.m. making these timeless tropical or tropical oasis cards. So I'm going to walk through. I have five people signed up and I have their kits all ready for them. And they're going to be able to follow along while I do that. That class is $15 or free with a $25 purchase. And then on Monday night, I'm going to be going live at 6 p.m. making these four cards for the Celebration Hoorah Raw class. Again, this one is four cards for 15 or free with a $25 purchase. So you can watch the Facebook Live, and that is absolutely free. But if you want to make cards along with me, um, you don't need much for supplies. There's very little stamping on these. You can always swap out what you um, with different stamps, but I'll do all your die cutting and your embossing for you. So um, if you wanted to get a three-month paper pumpkin subscription as your payment for class, then you're getting like double whammy. So um, what else? I think that's about it for now. Um, I'm planning to come back live um, with you tomorrow, uh, 6 p.m. to do the Tropical Oasis class. And then on Thursday, after I'm done working, for the day around five o'clock, I will be online again and I'm going to make a gift bag and a matching card. And then the plan is for something special for you on Friday as well. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, working along with me, putting the paper pumpkin or watching it. I enjoyed doing it. It was fun. So, all right. I think that's it for now. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Um, oh, if you did want to, I have um, my host code on here. If you place any online orders, you're welcome to use that host code. I would greatly appreciate it. Or also, if you want to place any orders, just give me a call, email or text, and I can help you get your orders in. Thanks so much. Um, bye. Happy stamping. Spread the love.